Welcome to the May 2024 edition of Unify Features versus PFSense Features in terms of firewall. Now, this is not an easy comparison to make because there's so many things that go into a firewall. And I want to cover this a little bit differently than I did in my July of 2023 video by actually showing some of the fundamental differences to kind of give you some overall views of these. Unify just in the last year has made some leaps and bounds of making a much more full featured firewall but I will not tell you which one to use. That is ultimately your decision. As I tell people, use what makes you happy, use what makes sense for your use case. What I do want to show is those nuanced details about how the services function differently in each of these firewalls. And what makes them even more challenging is PFSense is just that, a firewall versus Unify has a firewall feature, but it's actually part of a larger ecosystem and platform that can control your switches and your access points and Wi-Fi, et cetera, all in one place. So so there's no fair comparison to there, especially when you start talking about Dream Machines and some of the NVR features that get thrown on top of that, along with all the other cool things you can do with Unify. But I am keeping this narrowed in scope to just firewall features so I can talk about those differences. What I will tell you right here up front so you can save the time of watching the video, there's no gotchas here. I'm not going to tell you that one or the other is a terrible insecure platform because they're both solid and secure platforms that have great track histories in terms of their overall security as far as updates. Updates. Ubiquity has been on top of updates for quite a while. So has the folks at PFSense. So in terms of using it just for routing, yeah, these are going to be fine. So if that was your concern, hopefully I've just alleviated that and you can just say, okay, I was just worried that I couldn't use it for routing. But yes, of course it does all your basic routing and VLAN functionality. That's not what we're here to talk about because that does work perfectly fine in both platforms. Let's dive into those nuanced details where I show you some of those things that are advantages on the Unify side and advantages on the PFSense side. And it comes down to which is the need you have and which one fulfills that need the best. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking company looking for expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Perhaps you're an internal IT team seeking help to proactively manage, monitor, or secure your systems. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific project needs. Whether you require fully managed or co-managed IT services, our experienced team is ready to step in and help. We specialize in supporting businesses that need IT administration or IT teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. To learn more about any of our services, head over to our website and fill out the Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com. Let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store and affiliate links down below that will lead you to discounts and deals for products and services we discuss on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you really came here for. We're going to start here with my forum post, which you'll find linked in the description below. With PFSense, we're going to cover the CEM Plus Edition. So there's a couple little changes between them, and that'll be noted on this column here. Then we have the UXG Pro and the UDM Pro Max and SC versions. I'm not covering all of them because once you get down to a couple of the smaller ones, there'll be features that they don't have, such as the dual WAN and WAN failovers. Not going to be an option because they physically don't have the ports, but they do have most of the same functionality that we'll be covering. But I know a lot of people are looking at the UDM Pro Max and SE versions or UXG Pro. So let's get started. Can you run it on your own hardware? Well, of course, with PFSense, you can, or you can buy NetGate hardware and same with virtualization. You can virtualize PFSense Plus, but the UDM is a hardware platform and it comes with their software installed and there's not really any separating the two officially. Centralized management. There is not an option currently for PFSense for centralized management that's official from NetGate. There has been talks about this coming out in the future, but as of right now, that does not exist. And they do have either via the self-hosted Unify network server or via the Unify site manager, which you can actually also take your self-hosted instance of the network server and tie it to the site manager so you can have both technically. Uh, the web interface on PFSense is directly a function of the PFSense software versus the web interface is part of the Unify network server with the UXG Pro and via the built-in server with the UDM series of them. That being said, it's also worth noting that you can't 
put your own self-hosted controller and then adopt one of the unified dream machines into it because they have their own built-in controller that comes with the device so technically the software is running on there but it's running separate it's a abstracted layer from the firewall it all is tie into site manager but that is a fundamental difference between how they do like the uxg pro and the previously and now deprecated uh, usg pro that was one of the original devices on there now that we got some of that out of the way let's talk about license fees if you buy NetGate hardware, there are no license fees for the NetGate. But if you'd like to buy the NetGate PFSense Plus and not just use the free Community Edition or CE, yes, there's no license fee. So once again, I've just made that little asterisk there to let you know if you buy the hardware, there's no fees. There are no fees for the UXG Pro or the UDM series. This is one of the things that Unify supports is you could just have their controller software if you want to download and self-host it and manage a UXG Pro. No problem, no license fees, and there's no license fees with the built-in controller that comes with the hardware as well. Moving down to operating system, FreeBSD versus Linux. Um, then the next thing on there, though, that's really a big deal, I think, is automatic updates. That's one thing. I'm really happy that there's automatic updates as an option. You can turn it off. You can override this. I don't know that this will be coming to PFSense. That's a maybe. But having the automated updates is huge for people who want to kind of set it and forget it, especially home users or technical people like myself, maybe providing something for family members to go, what's the best one to buy? Use this. Just plug it in. It'll work. The setup is easy and it will auto update and maintain security. It is not the same way in the PFSense world where you can't just set it and forget it. It does take actual intervention for you to go in through and say yes to doing the updates. Now let's dive into Grang Interchanges and Rollbacks. And the Rollbacks are only a PFSense Plus, but the Grang Interchanges are in both. And this is not a feature that you have over in Unify. Here inside of PFSense, we have both the boot environments because this is the PFSense Plus system and a entire list of each change as it was made and an ability to roll back to that change, create differentials between those changes so we can look at how those changes were made. We know who made those changes and when, and we can quickly just hit this and revert back to that particular state or even just download a backup of the firewall as it was at that time when that change was made. This is really nice for not only a change log of what happened, but being able to see who did it and granularly roll back to it and even do differentials to see the file changes. And of course, the boot environments allow this as well, where you can take an entire snapshot of the OS if you have the plus edition and bring it back to that particular snapshot using ZFS snapshots in the background. Now, Unify does have logging of what the users did. So you can see when I open things or reviewed changes to the VPN, but you can't roll back to these. I can only see what changes were made. Like for example, the teleport subnet, I did change the range on that, but you can't go back and reverse it, but at least you know what I changed so you could go back and reverse it manually. High availability. We have a yes with PFSense. I've got a pretty in-depth video on that. I'm not aware of that coming to the UXG Pro. Yes, this is beta with certain models. It's actually really a cool feature. Unify calls it their shadow mode gateway. This has been out actually for a little while. This is the latest iteration that's in beta that I'm testing right now. It works really well. Several of YouTubers have also demonstrated this, such as Techno Tim and Chris from Crosstalk Solutions and Cody. It is one of the easiest setups. Uh, hats off for them for making this really easy. I will point out as well that the shadow mode does not require the same extra IPs as required in PFSense when you set up the HA there. This is simply using VRRP to hand off the IP between the devices. It works really well, but it is in beta as of the recording of this video. VLAN support. Yes, they support VLANs. I'm all of the above here, but with PFSense, you don't just have VLAN support. You can go a little further with things like Q&Q. &Q. You have a lot more advanced features, including interface groupings that you can do. And this goes a little beyond what you can do inside of Unify's platform. BGP and OSPF. This is a yes for PFSense. There's actually a lot of features around there. The OSPF was recently added and as of right now, it's still relatively simple, but this is a feature now supported in the Unify platform. Captive Portal. I'm not a big fan of Captive Portal, but yes, these all have Captive Portal options. OpenVPN, IPsec, WireGuard. I'm going to group all these together to kind of give a demonstration here that yes, but very basic. And what I mean by that, because even IPsec, I didn't put the words very basic, but technically by compared to PFSense, it's basic, but it may be adequate. If you're looking at OpenVPN inside of PFSense, you see a lot of options. This is so you can really fine tune exactly which data encryption algorithms you'd want to use. You can choose 
all kinds of parameters in here, your certificates, your certificate client with OSCP, if you have that feature you want on there, the ability to choose these different certs here and have an entire cert management system in here, uh, fallback algorithms, digest, certificate depth, client plus server, uh, three client plus two intermediary servers, four or five, et cetera. You can really go fine grain through all these controls. And I've got videos on how to set this up in PFSense. But yeah, this gives you a lot of options and then you can pass through extra parameters here. And the same goes for doing IPsec. You have a lot of options and a lot of granular control over IPsec. And if you go over even what they were considered the advanced settings, you have granular logging controls in here, configuration options, et cetera. So there's a lot you can do here. And if you have custom situations where you're connecting your firewall to a third party, a lot of times you have to go through these and figure out how to line it up and match them together. Coming over here to VPN settings on Unify, we have the WireGuard server. This is actually very similar, except for I will say Unify has the advantage of being able to do a QR code to make this easy to add devices. So the WireGuard is a relatively simple VPN server to set up on both of them. But once you look at something like OpenVPN, even with a manual setup here, there's just not near as many options or advanced features that you can do. And if you go over here to like site to site VPN, and we look at doing OpenVPN, or IPsec, same thing even with a manual setting, there's still not a lot of advanced detailed options that you have in here. Now, if we look at the automatic site-to-site -site options, there's nothing built into PFSense for automated site-to-site -site because PFSense doesn't have a cloud controller or anything to coordinate that. You can, via the Unify network server or their site magic, do automated site-to-site. -site. This is really cool. I think it's a nice feature that this is just built into the firewall. But with PFSense, we have the option of TailScale. It's a plugin that you can load just going through their normal package manager, nothing special. And with TailScale, this makes it easy to have Tailscale handle automatic site-to-site -site and other functionality. Tailscale is not supported because they have their automatic site-to-site -site and site magic built into Unify. So I don't really expect them to put this on a roadmap because uh, they have their own. Intrusion detection versus intrusion protection, Sericata or Snort, and all the features versus very basic and very basic for either one of these. And let me explain what I mean. When you're looking at the Snort settings or Sericata settings, it's a similar interface in PFSense, you have a ton of granular controls, not of just the settings, but the categories, which you wanna check, specific rules, variables, and so on and so forth. So there's a absolute ton of exposed options here, ways to pull in different lists and updates, including paid subscriber rules. Inside of Unify, you have auto or advanced and under advanced, there is a way to change the sensitivity and you'll notice that these are very similar to the rules exposed in PFSense and they're based on Sericata in the back end. So they're actually running similar services in the back end. They just don't expose as much detail, but this may be easier for some people because they can simply check the boxes they want and that's adequate for what you need, including like the dark web blocker or block known malicious IPs from their threat entries. But they don't give you a lot of grain or control here in May of 2024 over exactly what you want added into that list or custom lists or paid subscriber rules that you can buy from Snort or Sericata. This is where Unify really differs from PFSense. PFSense does not really have, especially since Squid has been deprecated, any good way to manage SSL filtering. Now, even with Squid in the past, I never thought it was a great way to do it. They do not have a DPI system versus you have a really solid content filtering and DPI system inside of Unify. Now, the traffic monitoring reporting is kind of related. You can view some of that with some DPI information using NTOP and G. I've done a video on that. Uh, you get to view it, but also control it. And they've done a great job of making this easy. So we can select a specific device or a specific network, and we're gonna do it by device, save, and we're gonna choose the apps. We'll select the apps, and let's say we don't want that device to watch YouTube or YouTube Kids. So we're just gonna hit save. You know what, I really think we should probably edit this and block Outlook as well. There we go, hit save. Now this device on a schedule or every day, every weekday on a timer, et cetera, can have that blocked. They've just done a nice job of this. The same with even adding speed limits. It's kind of all part of the traffic control system here. And this is something a lot of users are really gonna like. And it is a frequent request in PFSense. And even with PF Blocker, this is really not supported at this granular per device level. Which leads us down here to DNS filtering. And yes, via PF Blocker, because you can add very granular custom block lists, but you get that at the firewall level, not the per device level, versus just the basic features that you have for DNS filtering inside of the Unify platform. 
Now let's talk about advanced DNS options. Inside of PFSense, we have some very advanced options, but there's really no equivalent to even show you inside of Unify. So when we look at the DNS resolver settings, you have a lot of fine grain control over what network interfaces it's attached to, some advanced settings if you want to fine tune your DNS for a lot of different reasons. You can go through here and go and configure pretty much all your high-end DNS options and get very granular. You can leave them at default and they work fine at default. But if you have those advanced use cases, especially the simple ones like host overrides still don't exist currently in the Unify platform. GOIP filtering, this is across all of them. Yes, is with PF Blocker inside of PF Sense. Uh, traffic shaping, there's a lot of advanced traffic shaping versus the kind of basic on or off that you have here. I've covered this before in videos where you can choose your different type of Q algorithm management set your WAN up and WAN down speeds so you can get fine grain control over how you want the traffic shaping to be set up inside of PFSense. Multi-WAN support. They do have failover basic support inside of Unify, but it's a lot more advanced inside of PFSense. So let me show you the differences. When you go to your routing inside of PFSense, you have all of your different gateways. Then you can build your gateway groups. And when you're building these gateway groups, you have the option to tier them up to five different tiers, or you can even have them sharing tiers. This allows you to change how the failover works, what the trigger level is, high latency or packet loss. And this can actually be on a per gateway basis defined exactly how it monitors each of these gateways and makes those determinations and sets the weights. This is important if you have really advanced failover needs more than just failing over from one to the other. You do have the ability to failover inside of Unify, but it's not quite as granular. You can do distributed and choose how you want it distributed, but it doesn't really have tiering in here and there's only two supported. So there's not a ton of things. You either get a primary WAN or a secondary WAN, failover or distributed. And as I noted, not a lot of fine grain control. SNMP monitoring. This is popular in a lot of business environments because you have other services that may do the SNMP monitoring. You can do this with PFSense. Right now in the version three series, this is not an option for the firewalls, but there is an option to turn it on because it allows other devices that are unified to be monitored via SNMP. But this is coming to the 4.0 version, but uh, this is the May 2024 version of this video. Hence, I'm not talking about things that are not released yet, but that was actually coming soon for those wondering. Active Directory Integration. Yes, via Radius or LDAP. Yes, via Radius, because I know people can do it, but this is where there's a little bit of a nuance I want to talk about. If you head over to the PFSense documentation, there's entire documentations from the people at NetGate that offer how to do this step by step. This is something that I know can be done in Unify, but there's no official documentation from Unify exactly how to set this up, which is why I do say yes, because I know people have done it, but you're going through people's guides or videos people have done to see it. There's not much documentation on the Unify side that I could find at least that shows official ways to set that up. Policy routing. They do IP-based policy routing instead of PFSense. You can do policy routing for even the VPNs and send things over other gateways, but at present, not over the WireGuard one, which I think is a little odd, but I'm sure that's a feature that will be coming out in the future. Packet capture and diagnostic tools and NetFlow export. We can kind of group these together. This is a feature of PFSense. It's yes, built in and a package available if you're not using PFSense Plus. If you're using PFSense Plus, this is automatically built into the web interface. But I say yes to the command line on both of these because they're running Linux underneath. So many of these features are there. If you want to do packet capture with something like Wireshark, you could turn on SSH, SSH in. And I've covered before how to do this with like a Unify access point. So yes, there's actually a lot of things you can do from the command line on there, but there's currently no NetFlow export. And the packet capture tools, inside a PF sensor actually quite good and quite granular. You can choose the interface that you want to capture off of, then you can filter for only the packets that you want. And the advantage of doing it in a web interface like this is to be able to get very specific of only the thing I want on a network. And if that network's remote, it's harder to set up Wireshark to tie into it, but you can do that with PFSense. But now I can just grab a capture of some type of packet because I want to see what's going on and be able to pull that data right into a PCAP file that I can download and analyze on my system. They make it really easy to do inside of PFSense. Plus, they have all these other 
diagnostic tools like looking at the ARP table or doing a DNS lookup so I know how the firewall sees something based on its DNS settings, or even looking up what ports are open, which is very helpful when you're trying to figure out or troubleshoot any port forwarding options. Now, the last two are really popular among home users. I don't really see this as the target audience for people running the Unify systems. That's going to be having HA proxy as your reverse proxy along with Let's Encrypt certificates. This is a nice combo. I put it on here because I know a lot of people would ask about it if I didn't, but I don't really see this as Unify's task. Uh, it's not hard to insert name of your favorite third proxy or even HA proxy where a lot of other people have a dedicated secondary reverse proxy, but it's nice having it built into PFSense because it's the central point in your network. So it can handle all certificates and reverse proxying to other services that you may want to have on here. Now, the last thing I want to cover here is the firewall rules themselves. And this is where there's a really dramatic difference in the way they handle it. You have good features and probably the most common features available inside of the Unify platform for setting up firewall rules, but I don't believe they laid them out in the most concise or clear way. This is a little bit confusing when you have a whole lot of networks figuring out exactly how they're all structured versus the way it's handled in PFSense, where you have not only a ton of options, and as I noted, many of which you may not use, but if you need to use them, they're there. There's a lot of really advanced features. And because of the way they segment out all the firewall rules on a per interface basis and allow you to put things like notes in between them so you can group the rules together, along with a very nice aliasing system in case you need to pull in other sources to help build the rules. They've just done a great job on this with the PF Sense system in terms of layout and conciseness. There's also the ability to granularly do things in PF Sense, such as import just firewall rules. So if you have to do something repetitive, you can actually grab rules, drag them across, repeat them across, or even import and export them between different PF Sense devices to have them align to a structure that you want, or even just import and export aliases that you want to set up. This gives you a really a lot of advanced control over how you do firewalls, which is awesome. And not everyone needs it, but it's really nice if you do need it. And that's where these advanced use cases come in. And that's why I did this video. It's not that one is better than the other. Now, granted, many of you may go, but I really need the DPI and content filtering options that are in the Unify system. And hey, I get it. That's a frequent request that you just don't have inside of PFSense natively built in. But that being said, all those advanced traffic rules, if you're going, I have a large scale site I have to set up, I have a lot of VLAN. I need all these extra features and uh, I need to have these different rule sets be able to have an alias so I can push this across with granular control. Hey, PFSense has it for that, but that's not an everyday use case. And comparing these products kind of gets you that better idea when I say, and I've said this on many times in many debates with people about which one should you get. Well, I like the advanced features in PFSense and those are the features I'm talking about. But if you don't need them, well, then your use case comes down to buy what you need. Both of them are good platforms. I'm not here to bash on either one of them because as I said in the beginning, I've seen them both in large scale production systems. And if you're a small business running very few rules, which is a pretty common setup where most of your applications are in the cloud and you don't really host anything on site and you're just a bunch of users using computers on the network, then you're probably not even spending a lot of time building out many firewall rules. Uh, so that doesn't really matter to you. All in all, let me know which one is right for you. And if it wasn't the two I covered, then let me know what is. It's always fun seeing what people think in the comments. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to my forums where you'll find that list along with this video. And it's a great place to have a more in-depth discussion on this and other topics that you may have seen on the channel. And head over to lawrencesystems.com if you're interested in signing up for the newsletter to keep up with the things going on or check out our swag store. All right, and thanks.